Hello everyone, this is Ben over at ERP Connect. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the quickest and easiest way to get your vendors paid inside of Business Central. No more Notch file configurations, no more exporting and importing those nasty ACH files to your bank, no more manual vendor remittances, just pure automation. Thanks to our friends over at XE for giving us the easy button for these vendor payments. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and create those vendor purchase orders or invoices like you're used to. I'm gonna use a purchase invoice for this example, and we'll go ahead and click new and use our friend Dan Patella over at XE, put in a vendor number, we'll throw in a invoice number over here. Uh, you'll note here in a second that these lines are gonna get automatically generated from a function on the vendor card that we have as part of our advanced accounting uh, tool that I'll show you here real quick. If you go to your vendor card uh, right here, you will see that we've got GL and $500 amount specified right here when it loads. All right, right there, we see all of that. And that's gonna default every time into those vendors. So let's go back to the purchase invoice and get this thing posted. And then we'll be on our way to paying him. All right, we don't need to see that. And next we're gonna go into our payment journal. Now, the first part of the payment journal once we get there is going to be like you're used to, right? We're gonna run suggest vendor payments. So we'll pop in the vendor. It looks like we've got a payment journal here already. So let's go ahead and post this, probably some payments from the other day, send those remittances, and we'll go through all of this again. All right, so like I said, let's suggest those vendor payments. Again, standard business central. And we see that we've got the two vendor payments getting pulled in here. We'll revisit some of these XC fields at the end. They're defaulting from the vendor and the vendor bank account setup. But this next piece is where it starts to get fun. Instead of that mundane process that you're used to, come up here to the top, click XE, and start to initiate your payments. All right. So once this loads... The first thing we should see is the bank account that those funds are going to pull from. That's highlighted right there. This is obviously very important. Then there's this single bank entry. I like to use this and pick a clearing account. Essentially what that's going to do is it'll allow that lump sum to be posted in the bank in Business Central. So it reconciles to your bank. We're going to select the XE clearing account, which will essentially be a zero balance account. Now I will note that I'm only going to use this to pay domestic vendors. So the exchange rate you see here will be one-to-one. -one. However, if you're paying vendors internationally, there are some really nice bells and whistles here as well. One of the main features I like is the real-time rate shopping as well as the rate lock so that everything is predictable from an FX standpoint as soon as we confirm the journal. Now, if we look up here, we'll see that it's saying 74, 73 seconds. This is good for 90 seconds, the quote that is. And once it expires, if it does, you'll just have to click refresh. Additionally, down here, we see the exchange rate, the payment date, the status of the current payment, the fees, the total, and uh, the bank account to pull from. So a couple good things that you'll want to look at here. But once this is complete, you can confirm the contract, click continue up here, and your payments are now on their way. At this point, you can sit back and relax, and you don't have to log into your bank to upload those Nacho files anymore. Now, you will also see uh, the distributions for each vendor once we click continue right here which will include any fees as well as the consolidated bank line that will reconcile to the funds that are gonna be pulled from your account. So now if we go back, we can see those distributions, the fees and that consolidated line, which will reconcile to our bank. Now, the final piece that we're gonna to need to do is we'll need to come up to the home button and click post and send. So let's go ahead and do that. Click home, post and send. And we'll click yes, we want to post it. And then we'll also click yes, that we want to send these remittances automatically. So this is part of our advanced accounting feature, which we'll show here in a second. But the remittances are now in your vendor's inbox. So we'll show you how to configure these in a second. But first, let's take a look at some of the information that your vendors would get via email. So we'll open up this email and you can see the funds deposited. You can see that we've got an attachment here with everything that it applies to. And we saw that we have a rich text HTML email body that allows you to customize 
what your vendors will get allows you to throw some fields in there like that 500 to show right in the email body that they're going to be paid $500 for that invoice. Now, if you have those uh, auto remittances turned on to send, you will need to configure a few things here in advanced accounting. Just ensure this checkbox is on in the setup, configure the email and the report ID as well as who it should send from, then set up your rich text HTML email body for company branding that your vendors will receive. From the payment remittance dashboard, you can also see all remittances that have been sent, who sent them, and well as resend and print them directly from here. One of the biggest pain points I always found was that a remittance was sent or once it was sent, it was very difficult to find it and send it again. So this is that vendor uh, payment remittance dashboard that I was talking about. You can find them, send them again, print them, see who sent them, see when they were sent, and see the current status as well as the total amounts. So a very useful feature here uh, that we find a lot of clients like as well. So again, if you need to print it, I can click print. It will show me that same thing that I just got via email. Um, but if you needed to download it to your machine, you could do so here real time in the user interface. Now, the final piece that we're going to look at today is our vendor setup, which is very simple to get set up. So again, let's go up to our search. Or actually, let's go right here. I see vendors. So we're going to go ahead and click on vendors. And let's search for Dan's vendor that we were using. And you'll first want to make sure that you have a vendor bank account set up. Uh, this is all the same as out of box business central. So we're going to need that routing number, that account number, et cetera. Uh, make sure that use electronic payments is also enabled right here. And we've added a little nice change log here that you can see the vendor bank account changes. And that's it for here. So we'll go back to the vendor card. Um, here's that default purchase line that we showed earlier. So the GL account and the amount, uh, we've got a payment method code of XE. Uh, now you'll want to tag that to ensure that these are getting paid via XE. We've defaulted our preferred vendor account here. And, uh, there are a few additional purpose of payment and category fields that you'll also want to select. The final thing you can do here is validate with XE. This will ensure that you've set up the vendor correctly as well as the vendor bank account so that these vendors can be paid with the XE tool. Now, at this point, you are all ready to go with paying vendors directly out of Business Central. This uh, validation has been successful. And as you create those journals, again, you will be good to go. I do want to give a special shout out to my friends, Dan and Darren over at XE for their incredible partnership, as well as Mahima and Tamali for always lending a helping hand when needed. If anyone has any additional questions on how they can optimize the user experience in Dynamics 365 Business Central, please do not hesitate to reach out. I hope that everybody has a great day.